Brachiosaurus is a well-known animal, being especially iconic in Jurassic Park for how imposing, but at the same time being majestic all at once. Though what the animal was actually based on is a pretty interesting story, and the animal's appearance in the film is not based on the genus Brachiosaurus, but a whole other one. To gain some clarification and some background as to how this is the case, we have to go way back to the early 1900s to when these animals were first described to find out about what we think of them looking like is actually not the case. The genus of Brachiosaurus is based on a partial postcranial skeleton discovered in 1900s in the valley of the Colorado River near Fruta, dating from the late Kimmerigian age, about 154 to 153 million years ago. They were discovered in the brushy basin member of the Morrison Formation by paleontologist Elmer Riggs and his crew from the Fields Columbian Museum, now the Field Museum of Natural History of Chicago. The full type species was named as Brachiosaurus altithorax in 1903, with Brachiosaurus meaning arm lizard, and the species name coming from the apparent, unusually wise, and deep chest cavity, altus meaning deep in Latin, and thorax referring to the chest area of the body. The holotype, once fully prepared, consisted of the right humerus, right femur, right ilium, seven thoracic and two caudal vertebrae, several ribs, as well as the sacrum. To this day, however, a lot of the material assigned to Brachiosaurus is pretty uncommon and fragmentary, and a lot of material remains are hard to refer to them, either due to poor preservation or a lack of overlap with known remains. This could be down to either preservation bias or something interesting ecologically, that Brachiosaurus was a rarer animal in the Morrison, Though regardless, not a lot remains known about them other than their large size. This changed when in 1906, a mining engineer by the name of Bernhard Sattler came across an enormous bone jutting out of the grounds at the Tendaguru, the steep hill, near Lindy, in what was German East Africa, now Tanzania. Sattler sent a report of his finds to his superior, Wilhelm Marning, which eventually led to paleontologist Eberhard Frass to further investigate the remains in 1907, where he would confirm their identity as a dinosaur. Frass had observed that the Tendaguru Formation was exceptionally filled with fossils, and a massive expedition, one of the largest in paleontology history, was undertaken, with four field seasons from 1909, 1910, 1911 and 1912, opening up about 100 quarries to excavate and describe fossils. The expedition, once concluded, amassed a great swath of finds, with fossils being shipped back to Germany, largely undervaluing the native people of the region and the work that they put in given that little remained left in the country after the expedition concluded, an example of the many stains in history that remind us of how colonial powers impacted and undervalued their colonised areas. Continuing on, the many large bones unearthed in the region, which all belonged to one apparent taxon, were given the name of Brachiosaurus branchi by Werner Janinch in 1914, with them being known from five partial skeletons, most notably three skulls, which were exceptionally rare to find among sauropods given their small size in comparison to their bodies, alongside their comparative fragility. The remains of the largest specimen were at the time regarded as the largest known dinosaur to science, which was indeed true at the time, though they are now known to have been consistently outsized by the Titanosaurian relatives, which reached upwards of 60 through 80 tonnes, compared to the estimated 40 of these animals. Their remarkable preservation compared to B. altithorax in the States made it so that the genus as a whole was more completely known, and with greater certainty as to how they appeared in life, and what proportions they would have had, which made them a great representative for the genus, in terms of them in books, art, and most notably in film. This new species was, however, for reasons as will be got into, was doubted by some researchers into whether or not this was a valid lump, or if the two were actually separate in spite of perceived similarity. The first of these doubts came early on in 1919 by Richard Lowell, who suggested that the species of branchi may not belong in the genus, though his idea was largely ignored in scientific literature for nearly 70 years, until Gregory S. Paul, in 1988, brought the discussion back up, this time around with more specimens known of and data to examine. After making a skeletal reconstruction of B. branchi, he noticed that there were a few observable differences, even to the naked eye, as to how they differed from Alcithorax. He noticed that the caudals, humerus, scapula, ilium, femur, and other elements that were being to him very similar to each other, he further noticed that it was in the dorsal column and trunk where the most significant differences occur. The dorsal column of Alcithorax was found to be about 25-30% longer relative to the femur than that of branchi, with the newer arches also being taller and longer in Alcithorax. From this, Paul sought to separate the two, though the incompleteness of the remains from Alcithorax meant he instead proposed a separation at the subgeneric level, giving the species of branchi the subgenus name of Giraffatitan, essentially Brachiosaurus in brackets Giraffatitan branchi, 
meaning titanic giraffe, to differentiate. Subgenera, which are almost unknown in dinosaur taxonomy, are mainly ignored or disregarded due to how cluttered, cumbersome, and unreliable they can be, and haven't been used in any subsequent publication. Because of this, the idea didn't really take off, even Paul doubting himself later on, though that didn't mean that the idea was completely obsolete. It was brought up later in 1991 by George Olszewski's self-published revision of Dinosaur Taxonomy, where he proposed raising the name of Giraffe Titan up to a full genus level, though it was still largely ignored. A revival of the genus came quite a bit later in 2009, where paleontologist Michael Taylor noted that Paul's early statement about the bones of the animals being similar was an incorrect one, and that they actually differed regarding practically every bone, encompassing size, proportion, and shape. He also noted that Janinch's original referral of the African species to the American genus was only based on four synapomorphies, shared traits in a group from a common ancestor, and would not be all too convincing of a separation if brought up in the present, which is quite a reflection on how the field has changed and become more rigorous over time. Their overall body shape from even a far-off view is the most apparent signifier of their differences, with Brachiosaurus having a 23% longer dorsal vertebral series, as well as a taller and longer tail, whereas Giraffe Tyson, like, well, a giraffe, fitting to their genus name, having a more compact body with an even shorter tail, though overall being slimmer. Brachiosaurus had a more robust humerus in comparison with their femur than in Giraffe Tyson, showing that they may have carried a greater proportion of their weights on their forelimbs than their African counterparts. The arms of Brachiosaurus were comparatively more regularly proportioned in their shoulders, and being longer, deeper, and bulkier regarding their limbs, alongside their neck bones being more robust. Their skull shape was also found to be quite different, with Giraffe Tyson having the iconic, very curved crest and short snouts, whereas Brachiosaurus had a more elongated snout with less of a dramatic swoop to the nasal region. Curiously, Giraffe Tyson also seems to have a much wider head, something which you wouldn't really think of given their seemingly gross old side view. Though given the skull we have from Brachiosaurus altithorax, isn't of a comparable size and likely maturity. Older animals of this genus may well have had a similarly large mouth, as neosauropods, a clade that contains most of the group in general, having a widening of the mouth region proportionally as they grow. Along with the whole Brachiosaurus and Giraffe Tyson debates, three other species of Brachiosaurus have also been revised, with two no longer being valid, and a third becoming a whole other genus, being Lucer Tyson which shows that through increased rigorousness, and looking back at older fossils, a lot can be learned and changed from what we currently know, a process which is certain to continue well into the future. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and with that, I'll see you next time, whatever that may be.